In 1997, a 13-year-old girl mysteriously vanished from her hometown in Japan and found herself in North Korea. This is the story of Megumi Yokota, one of history's most shocking and mysterious abduction cases. As we bring you the mystery behind Megumi's disappearance, kindly like this video and subscribe to the channel. Megumi Yokota was born in Nagoya, Japan, on October 5, 1964. She was the eldest of three children and had two younger brothers who were twins. Megumi was a bright and cheerful girl who loved reading, playing badminton, and listening to music. She was also a good student who dreamt of becoming a nurse or a teacher. On November 15, 1977, Megumi left her school in Niigata, a seaside city on the west coast of Japan, after her last badminton practice. Unfortunately, that will be the last time anyone will see her in Japan. After her badminton practice, Megumi said goodbye to her friends and walked home, carrying her book bag and racket. It was a cold and dark evening, and the wind was blowing from the sea. She was not so far away from her parents' house when she suddenly disappeared without a trace. Her mother, Saki Yokota, became worried when Megumi did not come home by 6 o'clock. She ran to the school gym, hoping to meet her on the way, but the night watchman told her that the students had left a long time ago. She called the police and a massive search operation began. They combed the nearby pine forest, the beach, and the sea, but they found no sign of Megumi or her belongings. Her father, Shigeru Yokota, joined the search after he came back from work. He was a bank employee who was sent to Niigata a few months earlier. The police initially thought that Megumi had run away from home, or it was a simple case of kidnapping by a local criminal. They questioned her friends, classmates, teachers, and neighbors, but found no motive or clue. They also checked the trains, buses, and ferry records, but could not find evidence of her leaving the city. They interviewed more than 20,000 people and spent 3,000 staff days on the investigation, but they came up with nothing. Megumi's case became a mystery in Japan and a source of anguish and frustration for her family and the public. For years, the Yokotas had no idea what had happened to their daughter. They tried to cope with the pain and the uncertainty and hoped for a miracle. They kept her room as it was and celebrated her birthdays with cakes and candles. They also raised her brothers, who were still mourning the loss of their sister. They never gave up on Megumi and prayed for her safe return. Little did they know that Megumi was not in Japan but in North Korea. North Korean agents abducted Megumi. They dragged her into a boat and took her across the sea to their homeland. She was one of at least 17 Japanese citizens whom North Korea kidnapped in the late 1970s and early 1980s for reasons that are still unclear. The truth about Megumi's fate finally came to light in 1997, 20 years after her disappearance, by a defector from North Korea. His name was An Myung Jin, and he was a former spy who had escaped to South Korea. He told the South Korean authorities he had met a Japanese woman who matched Megumi's description in North Korea and learned her story from a senior spymaster. He said that Megumi's abduction was an unplanned blunder and that the agents had mistaken her for an adult in the darkness. He noted that North Korea took Megumi to a facility where she learnt the Korean language and culture. She was later assigned to a university where she taught other spies trained to infiltrate Japan. He also said that Megumi had married a South Korean man who was also abducted and that they had a daughter together. An's testimony was the first solid evidence that Megumi was alive in North Korea, and it sparked a media frenzy and a diplomatic crisis in Japan. The Japanese government demanded that North Korea admit and apologize for the abductions and return the victims to their families. The North Korean government denied any involvement and claimed that the defectors were lying. The Yokotas and the other families of the abductees formed a support group and launched a campaign to raise awareness and pressure the authorities to take action. They held rallies, petitions, and press conferences and appealed to the international community for help. They also tried to contact Megumi and her daughter, who they believed were still in North Korea. In 2002, a breakthrough came when the then-Japanese Prime Minister Junichiro Koizumi visited Pyongyang and met with the then-North Korean leader Kim Jong-il. In a historic summit, Kim admitted that North Korea had abducted 13 Japanese citizens, including Megumi, and apologized for the crime. He also said that eight of them, including Megumi, had died, and that the remaining five were alive and willing to return to Japan. 
He offered to send the remains of the deceased and the family members of the survivors to Japan as a gesture of goodwill. The Yokotas and the other families of the deceased were in shock and devastated by the news. They refused to believe that Megumi was dead and demanded proof and details. They also questioned the credibility and sincerity of North Korea and suspected that it was hiding something. They asked for a meeting with Megumi's daughter, who they hoped would shed some light on the situation. A few weeks later, the five surviving abductees who had been living in North Korea for more than 20 years returned to Japan for a temporary visit. Their families and the public welcomed them, and they shared their stories and experiences. They confirmed that Megumi had been their teacher and friend in North Korea, and that she had married a South Korean man and had a daughter. They also said that Megumi had suffered from depression and loneliness and that she had died in 1994, allegedly by hanging herself in a pine forest. They said that they had seen her body and attended her funeral, and that they had met her daughter. The testimonies did not convince the Yokotas and the other families of the deceased of the survivors. They pointed out that they were inconsistent and contradictory, and the North Korean authorities could have influenced them. They also argued that the North Korean government had not provided any official documents or records to verify the deaths and that the remains that they had sent were not authentic. They said that a DNA test had shown that the ashes from Megumi's funeral were not hers and that they could have been from different people or animals. They accused North Korea of lying and covering up the truth, and they demanded a full investigation and disclosure. The Japanese government agreed with the families and declared that the abduction issue is still a subject of interest and that it would continue to seek the truth and the return of all the abductees. It also allowed the five survivors to stay in Japan permanently and asked North Korea to send their spouses and children who had been left behind in North Korea to Japan as well. North Korea agreed to do so, but only on the condition that the survivors would also return to North Korea. The survivors refused to do so and said that they wanted to live in Japan with their families. North Korea then accused Japan of breaking the agreement and refused to cooperate. The abduction issue became a significant obstacle in the relations between the two countries and a source of tension and distrust. In 2004, the Yokotas received a letter and a photo from Megumi's daughter, who was at that time 17 years old. Her name was Kim Hee Kyung, and she said that she was living in Pyongyang with her father, Kim Young Nam, who was also a South Korean abductee. She said she missed her mother and wanted to meet her grandparents in Japan. She also said she was proud of her mother and wanted to follow in her footsteps and become a nurse. The Yokotas were happy and moved by the letter and the photo, and they replied with their letter and photo. They said that they loved her and that they wanted to see her and hug her. They also said that they believed that Megumi was still alive and that they would never give up on her. In 2006, the Yokotas had a chance to meet Megumi's daughter, Kim Hee Young, in person. The meeting took place in Ulaanbaatar, the capital of Mongolia where the North Korean government had agreed to let her travel with her father and grandmother. The Yokotas flew from Japan, accompanied by Japanese officials and journalists. They were nervous and excited and brought gifts and photos for their granddaughter. Megumi's family repeatedly received gifts from the North Korean government in 2014 and 2020. To this day, Megumi's family still believes she is alive and they remain hopeful. Megumi's disappearance is a mystery that still shocks Japan today. Thank you for watching till the end. Before you go, kindly hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications to avoid missing another video. Thanks for watching.